Okay, so REACH watches um, in the EU. So we will cover REACH, ROHS, the EMC directive, labeling requirements, and also CE documentation. So number one, we have REACH, which basically sets limits on certain substances, uh, chemicals and heavy metals, uh, lead, cadmium, mercury. And if, say, the amount of lead is above the limit, then that means the product, in this case the watch, is, is non-compliant. And this is to, to some extent an issue. I've been um, working a lot with uh, watch uh, importers and manufacturers uh, myself, um, mainly based in, in Shenzhen in mainland China. And I know from experience that some materials used uh, to manufacture watches uh, both the watch case um, and and the plating uh, that you apply to the watch case and also the straps may contain excessive amounts of, of substances that are restricted okay um, a few years ago we had a situation with uh, one uh, those watch straps i think um, failing um, compliance testing because they contained a, a certain plasticizer chemical that's banned um, or at least restricted on the reach list so that's the way it works that as an importer you don't really need to know which substances you don't need to know the limits because this is on the list of SVHCs or substances of very high concern which makes everything easier for you as when you approach a testing company all you need to tell them is okay I'm buying this product this wristwatch or the strap and I need you to test according to reach and they will then make the assessment. They will say, okay, we need to check for this and this and this substance and these are the limits. So that way it's, it's quite easy to work with. You don't need to keep track of like 50 different substances. Okay, so that's, that's reach. Now, ROHS also covers um, substances, more specifically, it covers heavy metals in electronics, okay? Now, ROHS can be said to apply to the qu quartz movement. Okay, so quartz movements are electrical and must therefore comply. That's pretty much the, the, the way it is. So I don't have the list of the specific substances, but there is some overlap with reach. It's just that this also applies specifically to the movement in this case, or when it comes to other products, also other electronic components. Okay. Um, the easiest way to deal with this when it comes to watches is to only use branded Japanese and Swiss movements because these are generally ROHS tested and compliant. Okay, so that way um, you can actually get test reports, for example, from Ronda or uh, Citizen Miyota. So that way you shouldn't need to go through that testing procedure again. But let's say that you will go with a Chinese OEM movement. Um, that movement may not even be ROHS compliant um, because it's not really magic. It's not like the test itself makes it compliant. If it does contain substances above the limits, then you know it's uh, you can't you can't use that. You can sell that in the EU. Okay, the EMC directive, uh, electromagnetic compatibility. Um, testing companies have a tendency to include the EMC directive on the list of tests that they deem to be necessary for wristwatches um, and they charge somewhere between three to four hundred USD for that um, but it actually classifies quartz watches as inherently benign equipment uh, because the well it's the um, uh, the electromagnetic um, impact on other devices is, is just minuscule. So uh, you can actually find information about this on the EU website. So it's something to be aware of. Now it doesn't, now in the rare case that you would actually go for a, well, actually not so rare these days, I guess, if it would be some sort of like hybrid smartwatch, uh, then you may need to then 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 that means the EMC uh, does apply and maybe even RED the radio equipment directive. Okay, labeling. Now this is just an extension of ROHS, so the CE mark. Um, if it's a quartz watch, it is electronics, and you find that in a lot of watch brands. I think Mark Jacobs, for example, they um, that's actually the only watch I've seen, big brands at least, um, 
with the C marked on the case. Uh, that was a few years ago. I think what most of them do, like Danny Wellington and so on, they they just print the C mark in the um, in the manual. So that's what I see um, for the most part. You should speak to a consultant like manualize about that, but. Uh, Anyway, that's what I see for, based on my experience. Then there's also we and product traceability, which could be a batch ID. All right, documentation. Uh, as said, this is also connected to to the C marking requirement, which in turn is is connected to ROHS. Uh, you need to issue a declaration of conformity, a user manual, a technical file, and a test report. If you want to learn more about that, you can also find this in in uh, you can find articles about the DOC, the user manual, technical files, lab testing, uh, in our knowledge base. All right, so that's everything. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can also try out our free compliance information software on compliancegate.com slash free or subscribe to the channel.